that we don't have to control it Put it all out in the open If it's only for a moment It's a lifetime of emotion Put it all out in the open Harlow and Betty raced for four and five years. Upon their retirement, they were turned out in a big herd from September to January. They then came back from their vacation to start training and learning about being sport horses. The beginning ended up being a little bit more difficult than expected due to having limited facilities during the winter because of the weather. In their hand walking sessions, we encourage them to graze and walk or stand, gradually getting them used to being further apart from each other as leaving each other was a trigger for them initially on top of anything else that overstimulated them. The purpose to encourage grazing is because chewing naturally relaxes horses and we also just wanted to keep things low pressure and allow them to see and check out things in a quiet and relaxing manner rather than a high stress one. When Harlow would spook, I would immediately just try to get her to either stand or walk quietly and then reward her when she turned and looked to me for guidance and just relaxed a little bit. This then encouraged her to start relaxing more and looking to me for guidance and a reward when anything worried her. Initially, she was just going into things with so much anxiety that it was easy to trigger her. And also between her and Betty, if any of them had a reaction to anything, they would feed off of each other, which made things difficult. Over time, we introduced them to new things and rewarded their curiosity and relaxation. The footing wasn't safe to do much else other than walk on due to how wet the weather was, and we couldn't yet safely hack them to use an arena and didn't want to stress them by hauling them off property. So this process may seem boring and slow, but it was crucial to, for helping them to start to relax and relieve tension. It may seem silly, but things as simple as the horses happily grazing and standing still for a few minutes were rewarding experiences because showing that they were relaxed enough to eat or at least trying to self-soothe by eating showed a change in behavior. At the racetrack, it can be often go, 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 and it can be hard for horses to relax, especially when they're around other horses who may be excitable or stressed. So especially when they're out in a big open place, when they're used to a little racetrack, it can be overwhelming and it's something for them to get used to because they grew up only ever experiencing one thing, which was the racetrack. So they haven't had the experiences of going for hacks or doing stuff like that, which is why this groundwork portion to help them build confidence was so helpful and also for rider safety it was important because when you're on a really reactive horse it's not very safe and it's also unnecessary to add in other factors that could stress them when you can accomplish the same thing in a safer and better way. After the groundwork just to develop a baseline level of relaxation that would allow us to ride somewhat safely and in a relaxed manner and start going for hacks, we started to get on them but before this we also still did the groundwork before getting on them and just tried to get a baseline level of relaxation that allowed them to focus and so we could hack them out because we wanted the ability to start taking them to other places that would be better for them to learn in with safer footing. And some days with the riding, there were other triggers, like Betty here you can see was upset and after this particular day, we started treating her for ulcers because she was sensitive to leg and being asked to go forward. We knew that Betty could be a more stressy horse just from experience working at the racetrack and knowing people who worked with her, so we knew that we'd have our work cut out to help her relax. And I also knew that Harlow had been a really strong horse to gallop and would be galloped in an elevator and was known for tossing her head a lot. So I knew that these were things that I would have to look out for and I expected her mouth to maybe be really sensitive to pressure and for her to expect to be caught in the mouth due to an elevator in a martingale. So all of these things were why I really just wanted to get them walking on a loose rein. That was the goal during all of these hack rides and it was difficult due to the limited resources we had. Working in an arena with safer footing would have been a lot more close to what they knew at the track and thereby lower stress and easier to do. 
Some days, if I wasn't successful in helping Harlow relax, I would just get off and hand graze her, or some days I would take her in her tack and have her graze. Some days I would walk her back in, on foot to show her the cows and have her feel safer because she could follow me places. But in general, teaching her the check-in cue was super useful for having her check in under saddle because I reinforced it under saddle as well. What this meant is that whenever she did get overstimulated and react, she was quicker to bring herself down and then look to me for guidance, which helps me help her relax easier. Harlow and Betty are both interesting horses because they were naturally super brave and curious, which made them highly trainable, but they went from 0 to 60 in terms of their ability to deal with stimulation quite quick, and they would go from walking and being nervous to being very up if something slightly changed. And this is fairly normal for horses off the racetrack because it's such a high-strung lifestyle, so teaching them how to walk when they may have been allowed to just trot any time that they were out training, if they got stressed, they don't have the same tactics to come back down to a low energy level. This is why it's so important in the beginning stages of their training to encourage a natural curiosity of things that they might initially be nervous of and just take time being slow and letting them walk around and check out things and learn how to de-stress and self-soothe at the walk and trot. So that's what we did in the beginning with the lots of hacking and then we would have occasional arena schools where you'd see them schooling in the arena like here. And as you can see here, Betty is swishing her tail and she's quite irritated. So we started treating her for ulcers during this period of time and also we're working a lot on reducing tension so she didn't feel the need to swish her tail out of nerves or discomfort from stomach pain or tension. So that was one of the big things for her. For Harlow a lot of her problem was the high-headedness because she had been galloped in an elevator bit so she had a tendency to be super high-headed and she would try to shake her head to avoid any perceived pull pressure. So a large part of my work with her is just trying to get her to relax and stretch forward and just drop her head a little bit because she hollows out so much by having her head so high and anytime she got nervous or thought she was going to get caught in the mouth or anything her go-to thing was to throw her head or get extremely high-headed and continue it going and going and getting her head more and more hollowed out. So to encourage that natural stretching and getting her to relax and lower her head, most of it is just me sending her forward into the bridle and having a nice light contact and giving her her head and throwing my reins away anytime she got upset or felt trapped. And then she naturally started offering a bit of a forward stretch. And initially it would only be for short periods of time, which is super normal because they're not super supple and they're still carrying a lot of tension. So for them, the stretch can't be held for lengthy periods of time until they develop that stretch strength and suppleness. So I just took what I could get and I rode her on a super loose rein and really just tried to make a habit of not touching her mouth. Betty on the other hand had a better rhythm than Harlow and she was less sensitive in the mouth and the pole than Harlow was. So for her she naturally carried herself in a way that wasn't super damaging and didn't hollow her out. So for developing the rhythm and just getting her to move over and side to side in a leg yield and start to supple, this was a lot of her exercise in the beginning. We weren't super focused on trying to get Get her to stretch super forward in the same way as Harlow where it was something I wanted to fix ASAP because of how hard she was on her body and the way she was going. For Betty she more naturally offered this forward stretch and had a natural carriage that was a lot lower headed and less hollowed out. So for her it was a pretty basic restart in terms of just developing that rhythm, getting her bending around a circle and coming off of the inside leg and moving over, and starting to learn the leg yield. And with this, all of the stretching and relaxing into the bridle comes naturally anyways. So for her, it wasn't the same thing where we had to worry about her being super sensitive in the mouth and try to be super extra soft to avoid her feeling trapped because she didn't have that same problem as Harlow. A nice soft contact is how we ride both of them because the main thing with the racehorses, which is why people will tell you that pulling on them makes them go faster, is that if you brace against their mouth, they typically lean into the contact and start speeding up. So you really want to make sure that you're not bracing. They still respond to contact like a normal horse would because they are broke. 
but if you brace and give them something to lean on, that's where you typically make them tense and they start to pick up speed and get quick. And this is how people get run off on. So the main thing is having a nice light, soft contact. And as soon as they start to stretch, you let the reins run through your fingers or you push your elbows forward. And if they start to lean too much, you just don't give them anything to lean on. And then that way you're not getting them tense and running into the bridle and thinking they need to go fast. And this is especially important at the canter because if they are going to be strong, they're more likely to be strong at the canter. And also with the canter, when you're picking up the canter initially, they might pick up the wrong lead, which is totally normal. And if they do, I let them canter on a ways before bringing them back because if you bring them back right away, you're telling them that they're wrong, which technically they aren't because they picked up the canter when you asked them to. Getting the correct lead is something you can work on over over time but you do want that nice soft response to the forward aid for canter and you don't want to shut that down so this is why I let them canter forward on the wrong lead first before asking them to correct it and then once they correct it they can go around for a little bit longer than what you might ask them to do if they're counter cantering so as you can see here Betty's canter is pretty rhythmic she's not running she's not strong in the bridle and she's being responsive which is great so when they're like this like we just make the assumption that they're going to be good and stay nice and light in their mouth and if they do try to take off or if they have a big spook that's where you can half halt and sit back and pick up more contact if you need to but the important thing is to try not to do that from the get-go because if you go into the canter with really tight reins and lots of contact you're more likely to create a frightened fear response where they kind of get tense and start going faster because you're giving them a reason to be concerned so that's why the nice light rein is important Part Carlo, you can see she puts her head up right away in the canter and she's kind of expecting to get caught in the mouth or to have the sensation of an elevator bit, which is a little bit of a conflicting signal, especially for a horse who is strong. And she was apparently very strong to gallop. So any effect of the elevator bit was amplified more on her because she would have been pulling into the bridle and thereby inflicting the leverage on herself while also having to deal with the rider's aid. So she's a little bit backed off at the canter, but I have to be really careful of how much I send her forward into the bridle because she naturally kind of expects to hit something or hit a martingale or something when she puts her head up. So I have to be very light and careful in how I ask her to do things and how I use my hands for steering at the canter because she is easily upset by contact on the mouth. And you can see she's super hollowed out and high headed in the beginning stages of the canter when she picks it up either direction. But as she goes around the corner, I try to use the corner and bending around my leg and a slight leg yield to get her to step over a little bit just to get her to relax and soften a little bit and as soon as she softens forward I let the rein slip through my hands or I push my elbows forward and the main thing is just trying to get her to soften and relax her head because the more high-headed she is the less comfortable it is for her and then it kind of amplifies her stress and tension because she's uncomfortable due to how she's carrying herself but she's also causing that discomfort because of how she's carrying herself. One of the really nice things to see with Harlow is that when she does start to stretch forward and relax, her gait's change completely and you can see her get a lot more relaxed through the back and just start swinging more and having a nicer, bigger step that's not so choppy and short. When she hollows out, she shortens her stride and just moves a lot more choppy because she's hollowed out. And she does likely still have some pull, soreness, and tension from what she used to get ridden in and just her natural way of carrying herself because of that. So we're working through what is probably going to be some lasting tension that will take some time for her to supple and stretch and I've also been using massage and body work to help fast track this by getting her worked on by someone who does massage to help out any soreness that she has that is existing because of how she went around at the track and how hard she was on her body in that way of going. So with her, my reins are super light and even when you can see there's contact, my pinky fingers are open so that if she does get upset, the reins will naturally slip. And some people might say that this is letting her get away with it or letting her kind of pull and hollow out and being allowed to but realistically all it's doing is just showing her that she's not trapped that she's not going to hit anything and that even if she has a reaction that she's not going to hit like the end of a martingale or someone's hands or experience pressure on the pole so I'm trying to retrain her thinking because she's a little bit defensive in how she goes around because she's expecting that so I have to be extra careful with my hands and extra light which is why I just leave my pinky finger open because it means that even if I'm not quick enough with my timing to fix it naturally she'll relieve the pressure herself just by pulling the reins through my fingers so being that soft and kind of 
really hands-on with trying to soften my my reins and make sure that I'm staying out of her way as much as possible was how I started getting her to stretch sooner because she started to trust the contact and trust the rider and trust the bit more than what she was in the beginning because she was very very paranoid about it and the other problem with her is that anytime she's stressed it gets worse so on days where she's more nervous she'll go back kind of to square one and now with Betty, you can see that her rhythm gets consistently better. She softens into the bridle quicker each ride. And she's a naturally like slower, more hunter type horse than Harlow. So she doesn't typically get as fast or frantic in her choppy steps, even when she is a little bit nervous. She keeps her rhythm really quite nicely and she's got a really good soft mouth and is happy having a rider in contact without getting upset by it. So for her, the main thing that we were working on is just trying to get her supple side to side, which is why we do a lot of circles, go down the long side, get some straightness, and then push her into the corner, get her bending around the inside leg, and just gradually increasing the amount of bend we expect from her. Since they're racehorses and they're pretty stiff from going mostly straight and around really large sweeping corners on the track, it does take time before they're supple enough where you'll actually see them doing the types of bend we expect with riding horses. So you have to give them some time to gradually build that strength and suppleness and flexibility, and it does take time. So a lot of this is kind of like bodybuilding work where you'll slowly notice changes over the course of lengthy periods of time but during the actual ride it doesn't necessarily look like you're moving mountains because it takes time for their bodies to adjust to the change and you don't want to force it because then it'll be uncomfortable for them to carry a certain stretch or work a certain way especially if you expect them to do it for too long or too drastically. The other thing to note is that since this arena that we typically ride at we have to hack to, the nice thing is that they get to warm up hacking up and down hills and on varied terrain on their way over just at the walk and then when we get here they're usually in a little bit better of a headspace than what they would be if we hauled them there. So that's really helpful and that's also why I value hacking so much for teaching them these things. Um, but that definitely helped in getting them settled, especially with Harlow, because when she comes off a trailer somewhere, she's a little bit more nervous. And Betty, too, because Betty had quite a bit of stress at the track, especially in her stall. So she definitely prefers not having to jump in a trailer to get somewhere. And then it allows them to start out more relaxed. And now in this big jump arena, this is one of their first times riding around jumps. They are really good and brave. And as you can see, even with this much space to move out, Betty still maintains a very consistent pretty quiet rhythm and this is just kind of her way of going like she's a lot more quiet and less likely to try to get fast and go whereas Harlow's thing when she starts getting nervous is to typically get a little fast and high-headed so they're two different horses in their style of going which makes them interesting because when one horse has a nervous problem the other horse is typically okay so they kind of trade off with what they get upset by which is nice because it makes it easier to manage them when they're out together experiencing new things together and also taking them out places has been Good with working on any herd bound issues because we've gotten to get them slowly used to moving further and further apart without it being like a huge deal where you're separating them immediately and it's a lot of stress all at once. So hacking them together and having them develop together has been a lot of fun for that reason. And as you can see here, Harlow's first time cantering in the big arena, she is very high headed and hollowed out and she wants to go quite quick. But the problem with like half halting her is because she gets upset and hollows out if you half halt too much. So I try to mostly use my seat and start sitting back and moving my seat back and just thinking slow rather than trying to use my hands as much as I might on a horse who's less sensitive. And here you can see I just kind of throw my reins away at the end of her canter and she brings herself back and pulls herself up just based off of my seat which is a really good reaction to have. After hacking them a lot around the trails and fields that surround the property we kept them at, we started hauling them out to places like Campbell Valley Park to go hacking. And this was one of their first times going to the park, which actually went pretty well, even though this was a windier day. So they had more of a reason to get upset because of the wind. They handled it really well. The hardest thing for them when they're going off property is encountering other horses, especially if they're going fast, which is normal because this is them equating what they see to being what they would experience 
experience at the racetrack rather than learning over time what their new jobs are and that they don't have to worry about going fast or running or other horses running past them and getting left behind and so on and so forth. So it's a lot of repetition to teach them that the association with other horses, even when they're off property, has nothing to do with going fast or running. And this doesn't mean that you can't ever like gallop your racehorses or have fun testing out their speed. It just means that in the beginning you really want to reiterate the fact that like most of the time that they're off property, they're just doing really calm, quiet stuff until they show you more consistency in terms of their responses to things. I was really proud of them for how they handled their first trail rides. They were super brave over the bridges and didn't really show any of the normal anxieties that you would see with horses their first time out. They were pretty keen and game, so then once they proved themselves there, we tried taking them to the beach, and this is where we did let them run out a little bit. I was really happy with Harlow's response to being let run out and like open up her stride a little bit, because as you can see, she's still high-headed, but she was really good about coming back to me and wasn't pulling on me or leaning into the bridle like they typically would in training, especially since I've been told how tough she was to gallop at the track. I was really impressed with how good she was about that. So that was fun. And then the next thing we did is once they're consistent on the flat, we started taking them over some little fences after flatting them first. And I always trot them up to fences to begin with because when they're just learning, you don't want them learning to rush. So until they're confident approaching and jumping out of a trot, I don't typically canter them. And then once they do start cantering, the important thing is to make sure that they're not rushing. So Betty is a good horse to canter defenses from the beginning because she is so naturally rhythmic and doesn't have the same desire to get fast. But with Harlow, there's definitely more of a need to watch her and try to discourage her from rushing because I can definitely see that it would be a habit that she could get into with how she is. But Betty has that natural tendency just to be slow. As you can see here though, cantering the first time up to the fence, she got a little nervous and was going to duck out and Janae corrected it and sent her forward and she went. So overall a very honest horse. Harlow is really honest to fences to the point where I know once she gets more confident she's going to want to start going faster to them. So with her, once she gets going more over fences it's going to be a lot about like halting and getting her to approach quietly. And with Betty it's going to be about getting straight lines to newer fences so that she doesn't kind of get wiggly once she's cantering up to something new. But as you can see Betty is really consistent all the way up to fences and doesn't have the same desire to rush to them which is really nice I think she'll actually make a really nice hunter type and she's really honest too especially since this is their first time actually seeing any poles and fences Harlow has a natural tendency to be super brave which makes sense too because she's coming from Irish breeding where a lot of their breeding is related to jump horses and they also do more hacking and whatnot out there than we do with our horses in North America because they have way more access to stuff like that so I was pleasantly surprised to see how brave she was and it it was also just a lot of fun to see her reactions to jumps for the first time. So mainly with them, in all honesty, the most we do was hacking, which is why there's not a whole lot of footage of that because we're not filming when we're hacking and we don't have anyone on the ground to film. But hacking and then light flat work is what they predominantly do and then jumping is very infrequent. We brought them to my farm to see how they would be over free jumps just out of curiosity and that was a lot of fun. Harlow was really brave and just had a tendency to go fast and long, which just kind of reiterated my thinking about her being a horse that I'd have to watch watch for rushing. Betty once again showed us how consistent she was up to fences and even on her own when she was rating her own speed did not have the same tendency to go long or rush as Harlow did. So it's interesting to just see how they handled themselves naturally and I really liked seeing that and I was also super proud of how they handled being hosed off at a new place and just settling into a new farm with lots of new horses. They did a great job. They got to have their baths and they were really really good and I also just liked seeing their natural athleticism. It gives you a very good idea of the horse's natural tendency when approaching objects because there's no rider to interfere with them or to try to press them on more forward than what they typically would on their own. So you get a good idea of what they would respond to new things like.
One of the next big tests for them was the first time we took them to Thunderbird for a schooling day. So this was not a show, it was a schooling day, but there was a lot more horses than expected. So we had to walk them around for about an hour and an hour and a half and let them graze before just to help them settle. Betty ended up settling in better than Harlow did. Harlow had a lot of trouble with her high headedness around all the other horses here. So most of her time was also spent walking. And then by the end of it, I was able to do a little bit more with her, but it was definitely harder for her to relax and you can kind of see that here. She gets really high headed and then her movement kind of goes up but not forward. And so for her a lot of it was just trying to relax and get her to relax and stretch forward into the bridle but her high headedness was definitely way more of a problem in this situation. So what that showed me is that she needs way more practice being around other horses especially off property and just learning that she is not on post parade, she's not going to a race and that there's nothing to worry about. But as you can see here she's got beautiful natural gait and she's actually super balanced. Her main problem is the high-headedness and her reaction to the bridle when she gets nervous. So that's what we have to work on. She was brave to all the fences. She didn't stop at all and she was really quite good about all of that. The problem was the distraction of all the horses. So it's something that I'll need to practice. I'll have to get her off property a lot more and get her going out and getting used to being around crowds without thinking that she's at the racetrack because once horses started to leave, she settled in really well and she was really quite good but it was very hard for her to settle when the crowds of horses were all in there and this is not an abnormal reaction for a racehorse so that's something to consider is that even when they're really good at home you could have something like that happen off property betty on the other hand despite being a horse that seems to rely on the herd more than harlow typically does she settled in beautifully after the initial hour and a half of walking them around and grazing them and just helping them settle into the environment and she showed us once again that she's super consistent to fences and has a really nice rhythmic canter and nice gates and she also showed us how brave she was to new things because this was their first time seeing jump fillers or anything like that and she handled it really really nicely and even though they're still learning and they're not always the most coordinated she just really exceeded all of our expectations with how well she settled and how well she handled all the new stuff. Harlow was really good and she exceeded my expectations from the standpoint of not spooking at any of the fillers, but like I said, the high-headedness and her distractions with the other horses was the tough part. So she didn't really get schooled over fences as much as Betty did, but we got to finish on a rather nice jump over a filler, which I was happy with. So the biggest part of their training still remains the flatting and the hacks because that's what they need the most for just continuing to relax but we will continue to develop them over poles and fences slowly but the most important thing is the flat work especially for getting them to relax and be consistent between jumps the most important thing is flatting. So as you can see in these GoPro videos how we introduced them to fences initially was by hand walking them around the property, hand walking them over some of the little fillers and then just hacking them around around under saddle at the walk and I did lunge Harlow lightly which I don't typically do but she was just kind of riled up by the other horses and needed to go forward um, but I didn't want to get in her way and ha risk me touching her mouth at all when she was worked up like that so I put her on the lunge line and then she got to be able to see the horses from afar and kind of start settling in on herself before we started to do things which was great and yeah since this time we've been doing a lot of hacking and flat work with them and then the hope is to take them back out at some point once they're a little bit more established being around other horses and continue to develop them like that so this is just kind of the beginning stages of getting thoroughbreds restarted and it is quite boring from the standpoint of it's a lot more walking than what people might expect and a lot more walking with some trotting and very little canter and just kind of boring work but the entire point in doing said boring work is to try to get them to relax because they've grown up expecting exciting high energy high intensity busy like lots of stuff happening lots of action type work so in order to retrain their brains and have their brains start to slow down and relax we need to make work as boring as possible so
So anyways, that's a recap of our work with them. They rested from September to mid-January, and then we started groundwork with them from mid-January to end of January, and then in February, that's when the riding work really started with them, but it was mostly hacking for the first while. And now we're at the point where we're doing flat work, hacking, and they occasionally get to pop over some small jumps or go over poles, but still the flat work and the hacking remains the priority. And we're going to continue developing them and just getting them to relax more and start their lives as sport horses and hopefully take them out to shows eventually. So if you stay tuned, you can continue to follow their progress because I'll continue to post some updates. I just wanted to do this one big update because I've barely shared about them on YouTube. So this is their introduction as well as their transformation so far and I'll continue updating it as we go. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this and turn on your post notifications so you don't miss anything next time. Thanks again everyone. I appreciate your support.